haven't hit the speed bag in like two, two and a half years. Doing a little out of practice and stuff, but I just got it. Nice little Everlast deal. Got it for like 99 bucks on Amazon, which was amazing. Of course, it didn't come with the bag, so, you know, that's going to run you another $30 or whatever. But, you know, 100, 140 bucks once you get the, because uh, you got to buy your own mounting brackets and stuff. But I would highly recommend it. You know, normally it's like, Uh, two, two thirty, two forty, somewhere in there. But I got a great deal on Amazon, so that's what it, you know. Anyway, so we're gonna start doing a little um, how-to videos, and uh, as I start hitting the bag more and stuff and get a little better, I'll start throwing in, you know, elbows and, and the quick pops and stuff like that in there, you know, so you can uh, uh, follow along or you know start to do it. Cause a lot of people, you know. Everybody wants to run up on the bag, you know, as soon as they see it, they're like, and they're like, oh, yeah, look, I can hit the, hit the crap out of the bag. But that's not what it's about. This is hand-eye coordination. It's about being able to get into a rhythm, keep a rhythm. It's about keeping your hands up. You know, a lot of people, you know, they, they don't think about that the whole time they're doing it. But the whole time you're hitting the bag, your hands need to be up here by your head. Now, when you're hitting this bag, your hand does go in a circular motion. If you want to think about it, you know, it's like you're a... Uh, and don't use the million dollar baby. Well, I guess if you wanted to. You know, he says you've got an ice pick in the back of your hand and you're, and you're chipping at it. Now, what I would recommend is don't squeeze your hands real tight. Don't, don't, don't you hit them. When you're hitting, when you're hitting you don't want to squeeze your hands real tight, but actually you want to kind of keep them a little bit loose. And you want to use hand wraps. Now, I've done this enough in the past. I don't care if I split my knuckles or anything like that. It doesn't bother me now. But what your knuckles will do is because they're ridged and they got ridges, is that it will throw it off if it hits it because you should try to hit it with a, with a flat surface, and namely like the back of your hand. So the first thing you're going to do when you start doing this is nice little circles. Now, I want you to start with one hand. And being as most of you are right-handed, you get in your stance, you got your hands up, and you're going to take that one hand, and that's all you're going to do. Now, if you listen, there's a one, two, three. And that's what you always got to keep in your head. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then once you start getting good enough, then it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and like that. But that's actual times your hands hit in the back and stuff. So we go. One, two, three, 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 Then as you switch over, you switch over to your other hand. But you want to keep your hand rotating the whole time. You don't want to stop. You want to keep your hand moving the whole time. But it's a rhythm. You don't even have to look at the bag if you're watching me. So you keep it like this, but you're always thinking. It's a rhythm and you want to keep it going. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now as you get better, or the more you go on, obviously you're going to start incorporating, you want to incorporate your other hand in. But you really, I mean, you got to get the feel for it first. So take your jab hand, the hand you should always be using anyway. You're going to rotate it. When you can do, when you can do ten in a row, you switch over to your other hand, okay? Once you get 10 without make, making a mistake or knocking it off sideways or miss hitting and stuff like that, once you can get 10 in a row, then you want to start to switch over to your other hand. The switch over is hard. But what a lot of people won't tell you is, is it has to do with your footwork too. Now, as you're coming on and you're using your left hand, your weight is transferring more to your left foot. And as you switch over to right, you gotta switch that weight over to your right foot. And as you switch back, you almost start moving back and forth because you're switching your weight back and forth. And some people might not tell you that. They're like, oh, they just get on there and they bang the hell out of it, but they don't let you know that. But it's back and forth. You're switching that weight. You're switching that weight side to side. So that's, you know, that's one of, one of the lessons there. In a, you know, we'll get it. We'll get it going a little more down the line. You know, once we uh, once we get it. But remember, you gotta get ten first, and then you switch over and you do ten the other hand. 
And once you get 10 that way, you 10, 10, 10, 10. You do that till you get about up to almost 1,000 before we start breaking it off. And you're always going to do two, fours, and eights, really, once you get it get further along and stuff like that. But for this part, we just want 10. Uh, is the heartbeat of a gym, or the heartbeat of your house, or the heartbeat of wherever you're at. That's what it, that's what people are hearing when they're jumping rope. That's what people are hearing when they're sparring. That's what people are hearing when they're doing anything else, lifting weights. I don't care what it is. But if you get somebody to hit the speed bag really well in your gym, it's like a blessing because you're there and you're and you're feeling it. You know what I'm saying? It gets you up on your toes. Gets you wanting to hit the bag a little bit more. All right. Now, I never said I was an expert on the bag, you know, but at the same time, I used to say I, I liked hitting the bag. Who didn't like hitting the bag, right? So remember, you keep your tens and tens until you get, I'm a little close to the wall here, in case you can't tell. So when I'm doing it sideways, it's not like I'm not broad or anything, you know, I'm kind of crunched, so it's a little harder for me, so I'm going to come out a little bit. rhythm it gets in you and, you and you get to go and you get to you know start smacking the hell out of it and stuff but the harder you hit it your hands got to pick up speed too you hit it soft the bag goes slow if you hit it harder the bag gets faster so the harder you hit it the faster that rotation has to come around on your hand all right? Think of it as like having, like the bag's a circle. You got the circle, right? Your hand's always in a circular motion as it's hit. If you think about it, just put your hands like this. Get that nice feel for the circle. And get it to where you can go at decent speed, but your hands aren't hitting each other. You see what I'm saying? You feeling me down there? All right, well, you guys have a great day. I'm going to smack the bag a little bit or something, I don't know. Huh. Yeah, it's not the friggin' light out. 